Hallelujah. Well, I gave Deborah some scriptures to put up on the screen, and I don't even know if we're going to go there, so Deborah, just stand by, okay? Um, hallelujah. How many of you know that uh, Peter denied Jesus three times on the night of his crucifixion? Yeah. Amen. Peter was just so determined that he said, Lord, I will never forsake you. I will never deny you, even if I have to die for you. Then after Jesus' resurrection, <clears throat> he came to Peter. They had already interacted a few times. You know, I, it, it had to be startling, okay? I mean, even though Jesus told them he was going to rise from the dead, you know, even though they had witnessed Lazarus being raised from the dead, but this was their Lord. This was their Savior. This is the one they walked with and seen do every kind of a miracle that you can think of. Every kind of a, he did all the miracles. They saw him personally do all the miracles we read about in the Gospels. Amen. So it, it had to be quite, I mean, just think about it. It had to be quite unsettling. I mean, we all get down on Doubting Thomas, right? Ah, Man, what's wrong with that guy? You know, he said, unless I see the nail prints in his hands and the wound in his side, I won't believe him. We all get down on him. But, you know, we fall into unbelief all the time. Yeah. We have unbelief attack us, and sometimes we give in. Sometimes I give in. Okay? And I have to catch myself and say, oh, Lord. Or let me rephrase that. The Lord catches me and leads me back. Amen? Amen. Not, I'm not talking about unbelief and not believing in him but just doubting promises in His Word sometimes when the enemy hits our mind with fiery darts. But we, we go back and, and Jesus came to Peter at some point after the resurrection <clears throat> and He asked him a question. Peter, do you love me? Kevin, do you love me? Arlene, do you love me? Hallelujah. Jay Tholen, do you love me? This is not me, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus asked Peter this question. <clears throat> and Peter denied him three times on that night. And Jesus asked Peter this question three times. He said, yes, Lord, I love you. Yes, Lord, I love you. Yes, Lord, I love you. And Jesus told him, If you love me, you're going to feed my sheep. Amen? Amen? Now, I can't tell you where to go because this, this is something the Lord just brought to me. I can't tell you where to look it up. But if, if you... If you uh, uh, have your phone app, you can you can look it up, but that's not really uh, the important thing right now. The important thing is the fact that Jesus said, if you love me, he asked, do you love me? And then he said, feed my sheep. You know, as a pastor, um, a lot of times I struggle with Lord, what message do you want me to bring this Sunday or whatever time the service is? Because I don't want to just um, bring something that, you know, I've been reading the Scripture. You know, I read the Scriptures. I read the New Testament. I read the Old Testament. I don't know. This is probably a revolutionary thought to some of y'all, but I actually read along with our uh, book that we read as a congregation. I encourage everybody to do that. We post a, a, a book of the Bible that we read together day by day, read one chapter. I encourage you to do that. 
Because the Lord will speak to us as a congregation all together if we read together. I'm telling you, it works. It works. Um, but I read it, and I read different places. And something that I've taken up a few months ago, probably back in May or maybe April, I just started reading the book of Acts consecutively. As soon as I finish it, I start it again. You know, sometimes a chapter a day. Sometimes I might miss a day. But I, some, one day I read like six chapters. I had a Saturday that I had a few hours and I read like six chapters. But I read all, all different places. Amen? Because I want to be filled up with the Word of God so I can bring forth the Word that God wants me to speak yes. to you. Yes. We say, the congregation. That sounds so, I don't know, institutional, doesn't it? The congregation. The sheep. We are God's sheep. I am a sheep of God. Amen? God loves His children. He called us His sheep because He needs us to follow Him. So I was raised on a farm, FBI, farm boy from Indiana. I was raised on a farm, and I can't ever remember, maybe only once or twice, that my grandfather ever had some sheep on our little farm. It was just a small farm. At one time, he had farmed up like to uh, 500 acres that he didn't own, but he farmed it. Um, but he. When when they were when in 1960 they bought a little five acre farm and he had pigs he had cows uh, he had um, what else did we have pigs cows sheep only a couple times um, what are the other farm animals oh chickens 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 I'm like what my mind is in the blank chickens rabbits um, yeah, the roosters for the chickens, yeah, that's kind of a thing, you know. Um, male and female, he created he them. Amen? But sheep, some of the other farmers in the area had sheep, and I couldn't stand sheep. They are smelly. I mean, I mean, pigs are smelly. Everybody knows pigs are smelly, but you, you know, we see the sheep, and you see the commercial on the, the uh, what is it, the Serta, the, the, the commercial about the sheep, counting the sheep and sleeping. They're so white and fluffy, and oh, they just pounce around, you know, bounce around, pounce around, whatever. And it's like, oh, well, those are just beautiful animals. Let me tell you, they ain't beautiful animals out on the farm, okay? And they stink. I think I'm going somewhere with this story. <laughs> but sometimes I stink. And, and being a kid, being raised around farm animals and, and just my interactions with sheep is like, when I first came to the church, um, uh, 1970, the end of 1976, and... Um, Brother Lowell would always, you know, say he'd call us for the sheep, and I mean, he'd read it from the scripture and stuff, and I always hated that. I'm like, man, I don't want to be like a sheep. I don't want, man, those are nasty, smelly animals, but is anybody around here ever, any of you, I mean, I can raise my hands, I'll put both of them up, any of you ever stink? Any of you ever get into a mess? Any of you ever get just so messed up that the Lord has to take you and and clean you up as you allow him, if you follow him. Amen. Amen. Yes. So, in the Psalms it says, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. As he wants to feed us good things. Yes. He wants to let us drink the living water that He provides. He wants us to, to feast in green pastures. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Jesus said, If you will follow me, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Now, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not above correction. He said, take up your cross and follow me. Jesus didn't say, take up my cross. None of us could bear his cross. He said, take up your cross. And the cross that we have to bear is laying down our will for his will. And having the mindset of a sheep in the fact that we will follow the shepherd. Because sheep, how many of you have ever watched the old cowboy movies? Amen. And, and the, the cattle drives and the, all the cowboys on their horses with their lassos and their whips, they're driving the cattle. It's called a cattle drive. You get behind the cattle and you drive them. You push them. You make them go. Amen. Sheep don't do that. <laughs> it's very hard to drive sheep. You have to get their confidence and lead them and they will follow you. Amen. To Jesus, the good shepherd, he needs us to follow him. My affection, my devotion poured out on the feet of Jesus, we sang this morning. He needs us to follow Him. And it's not selfish on His part for us to follow Him because when we follow Him, when we yield to Him, we receive so much more than we could ever give. I've been working at a, a doctor's office remodeling, uh, a working doctor's office, and some of the staff in the doctor's office, the, uh, there's a couple guys that are in there sometimes, but it's the doctor's a female doctor, and, and uh, she's got a couple, uh, what do they call, uh, PAs, physician assistants, and she's got other staff that do all kinds of stuff. and. Uh, so, you know, I, I've been there for like, working in there for two months, I'd say. July, yeah, actually June. We started in June. And uh, I've gotten to know some of these ladies, you know, just saying hi to them. And, you know, one lady I told y'all last week that I prayed for her. And, and when she was just, had her hand like this, looking at her computer. And, and uh, she's a believer, but I got to pray for her. And, so I invited a lot of them this week to the night of worship we had. And uh, I told them if they came, they could see me dance. <laughs> Amen. And uh, even though I don't dance good, but I dance for the Lord. It doesn't matter what it looks like to you. He loves it. Right. Amen. Amen. He loves it. He loves it when I dance because I dance for Him. He loves it when I sing because I sing for Him. He loves it when I clap because I clap for Him. Amen? Amen. So, um, when we had the, the uh, Pass the Flame service and the, the, the band called for people to come down and worship, man, I'm the first one down here and I'm dancing. And the, uh, the rapper guy said, he said, man, you... You, you, uh, I don't know, he, he didn't call me old man, but he made the, the inference, this guy dancing more than all you younger people. <laughs> Amen? Because I, I want to I wanna dance for my Lord. I want to I wanna shout for him. I want to be a fool for Christ. Amen? Yeah. Amen? So, so this morning, as the heart of God is touching my heart, you know, Miss Millie loves it when I break out with a line in the song. Okay, she's not here today, but she loves it when I do that. So I told him, I said, I sing, I dance, I clap, I shout. And uh, Miss Felicia said, I love to see that. And uh, 
She's the lady I prayed for. She said, I'd love to see that. She said, I, I need to find me a good church. So hopefully Miss Felicia will show up one day. But this morning, <clears throat> this morning you may see the crying preacher. Okay? Because God wants all of our hearts to become tender before Him. So he wants to speak to us in that still, small voice. Let me rephrase that. He, speak, he is speaking to us in that still, small voice. But we've got to put ourselves in the position to hear him. Amen? Um, I want to phrase, uh, preface this with... I have a uh, Bluetooth earbud set. I put it around my neck and the, the earbud things retract in and out. I put them in. And they're a great tool. Okay? But sometimes I think earbuds are from the pit. <laughs> Amen? Because you're trying to communicate with somebody and they're just, they're just in their own little world with their earbuds in. Amen? I usually put... Unless I'm doing something that's like loud work and I'm trying to drown out the work with worship music or something, I usually leave one out put one in. So I can hear those around me. Amen? Because those around me, you all, the other people that I interact with every day, you are, you are and they are what's important. What's important is the people... Tommy gave an awesome message in Sunday school this morning talking about how we just have to love people. Our, our mission, God has given us a mission, is to love people. The best way you can love people, and I'm, I'm so guilty of this, and I pray God help me all the time, is I talk too much and I don't listen enough. I talk too much and I don't listen enough. But if we would just let people talk, God will show you how to minister to them. Instead of us doing all the talking. Because people need to be heard. God wants to hear people. He wants us to feed his sheep. The first and greatest thing we can feed the sheep is to love them. He wants us to lead those lost lambs to him. As we move forward, grounded at NTC, Ephesians 3 talks about being rooted and grounded, 317, in the love of God. And Colossians 1, 23 talks about being rooted in the Word of God. Amen? That's our foundation is the love of God. Amen? This ministry was founded on the love of God and the Word of God. Amen? I know Lowell never did like us to call him brother. Brother Lowell, he just said, just call me Lowell. Amen? Well, Lowell and Lucy gave us a foundation to build upon in the love of God and the Word of God. Amen. And we have to continue. We have to continue. The Word tells us to continue constantly. When you read in the, uh, the epistles that Paul wrote, he said, continue, continue, continue in the Word. Continue on the foundation of love. Continue to follow the faith. Amen. And that's what we're going to do. Amen. That's what we're going to do. We're going to continue to put the Word of God first place. 
Amen. See, we have to, we have to, amen, preach the message of, I don't know, six weeks ago maybe, about the filters, the filters that this world tries to get us to think about things through. Okay? But our filter has to be this holy Bible. Amen? Amen? And when we allow this Word of God to be our filter, the Holy Spirit will speak to us and give us the right direction for the right moment. How many of us in the room, you don't have to raise your hand. I'll, I'll be up here, I'll raise my hands again, okay? How many of you have ever made a decision, you look back on it and you say, Oh, what were you thinking? Like I said, I want mercy, not justice. Amen? I want mercy, not justice. So our justification is only through the blood of Jesus Christ. Our freedom is only through the blood of Jesus Christ. So we have to move with the Spirit. Amen? I tell you, I am not ashamed of my foundation that Lucy and Lowell Dudding gave to us. It is a good foundation. It is a solid foundation. Amen? They taught us to love people first. Amen? And we have to continue that. Sometimes loving people might be different than what we think it should be. Sometimes there's tough love. Sometimes there's tough love. And we say, man, you're being hard. Sometimes we have to be firm. Sometimes we have to be so gentle and delicate. Well, I tell you, the, the worst punishment I could get, my grandparents raised me a lot. As much as I would stay on the farm with them, as much as I could, I would. And uh, the worst punishment that I could ever get from my grandfather was for him to say, I'm disappointed in you. I would rather take a whipping with a leather strap than to hear my pop say, I'm disappointed in you. And thank God I only had to hear that twice. So we have to listen to the Holy Spirit to help us to feed His sheep, to feed one another. Amen? There are so many uh, awesome people in this room. Every person in this room I can learn something from. Every one of you have life experiences and God experiences that I don't have, but I can learn from you. We need to not be so quick to judge. We need to be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Amen? Quick to hear. Jesus bore our judgment. Amen? And when we become His children and we are covered by the blood of Jesus, we are reborn, we are renewed, we are redeemed, He's no longer disappointed with us. Amen? We are accepted in the Beloved. Now, I'm not saying that we won't do things that he doesn't like. We're probably going to still mess up and do some things he doesn't like. But 
We're not, he's not disappointed because we have been appointed. When we become his sons and daughters, we have been appointed to a purpose and a plan that he has for our lives. We have become appointed. Amen? No longer disappointed. Don't let the devil keep disappointment and shadows of failure over your life. We need to bear that cross and say, Father, not my will, your will be done. That's what we need to, that's what we have to bear. We can, none of us can bear the suffering he bore. We're not supposed to. He's the Savior. He's the only spotless Lamb of God that gave up his life and allowed his body to be tortured so we could be healed, so we could be delivered, so we could be set free, so we can have a relationship with the Father. We have to get out of the wrong mindset that God's mad at us every time we make a mistake. When our children make a mistake, we have to say, son or daughter, that's a mistake and you need to correct it. Okay? But if we discipline them in anger, what does that accomplish? Nothing. It just drives a wedge in our communication. Amen? We can discipline like the Father does in love. Amen? And the Holy Spirit can lead us. Man, I really wish there was a, a for all of our sakes, I wish there was a like a parenting handbook that came when you got your baby from the hospital or we got our little girl from China. Amen? Because I've made many mistakes. But thank God for the Holy Spirit. He helps us. Thank God for His love and His forgiveness. So today is a different service. But they're all different. And I just want to encourage you to say, yes, Lord, I love you. And I will feed your sheep. Yes, Lord, I love you. And I will feed your sheep. You know, each and every one of us need to feed one another. And that first part of love that we need to give is, like I said, we need to feed one another love. And then we can just go right down the list. Joy. Peace. Peace. Long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, goodness, temperance, faithfulness. That's what we need to feed one another. Amen? Yeah. To walk in love. To let the Holy Spirit lead and guide us. Come on up, worship team. When they sang that song, Jesus, we love you. Oh, that song just melts me. See that some people say, oh, I don't like to go to church at 11 o'clock. I like to come at 11.30 when the music's over because I don't like that style of music. We need to forget about the style and listen to the words. Because the words are what's important. You know, as children of God, we're not supposed to just come in here. None of us in any church are just supposed to come in and listen to the worship team or listen to the choir or listen to the soloist. We're not just supposed to listen. We're supposed to participate. I mean, I know there is a soloist time and, and things like that, but when we're coming to worship the Lord, it's for us. Amen. It's for us to speak those words of praise and worship and adoration out of our mouths because it does something for us when we worship Him. Yes. When we tell Him how much we love Him, it's part of his reprogramming process that our souls become 
more anchored in his love. To sing about the faithfulness of God. To sing about the goodness of God. To sing about the mercy of God. I love to worship. I love to praise him. If you don't think you like the style of music, listen to the words. Because we don't sing anything in New Testament church that doesn't glorify the Lord. Amen? See, that? that's a, a long time. A long time that we have to continue worshiping the Lord. Worshiping the Lord. Worshiping the Lord. Praising the Lord. Praising the Lord. The longer we praise Him, the longer we worship Him, the more rooted and grounded we get in His love. Because He needs us to be ready when we go outside these four walls. He needs us. We say, we need you, God. We need you. We need your help. We, we do. We need Him. But He needs us. The Lord God Almighty needs you. Yes. Come on, you got to get a hold of this. He needs you. Because God the Father is seated on His throne in heaven. And Jesus is seated at His right hand. And positionally, Paul tells us we are seated with Him in heavenly places in our position of authority. In the Godhead. But you and I are here on this planet and He needs you to speak. Yes. He needs you to intercede. Yes. He needs you to speak His love. He needs you and me to become so in love with Him that we can't stop talking about Him. To listen to the people around us and then when the Holy Spirit gives you that right moment after we listen to people then the Holy Spirit will say now is your opening now is your, your time to minister my love to them. You and I can't save anybody. Only the blood of Jesus can save them. Only them having a relationship with the Father through Jesus can save them. But, oh, God needs you. He needs me to be those ones that will feed them that love. Amen. Feed them that kindness, that gentleness. God wants you, but He wants us all so much to be in love with Him. But in the earth, He needs us to spread His love more than anything else. I am so thankful for each and every one of you that are here. I'm so thankful that God has placed you here. So thankful that He's given us the privilege to be a family. Yes. Families have spats. But I thank God we can work through them and get over them. Amen? Because our love and our relationship one another is precious to God. Supporting one another, serving one another. Working in His vineyard together. As Tommy was saying in the Sunday school this morning, because it goes right along with my message, you need to let all the pressure off of you. You need to, you need to bring up pressure, stress, you need to leave it at the foot of the Savior. You need to bring it to the altar. You need to put it at the foot of the cross and leave it there. Because the Holy Spirit's the only one who can draw someone to salvation. That's right. 
You can't, I can't, all we can do is listen and love. It's not our job to save the world. Jesus already did it. They just have to come to a position to where they can understand it and receive it. And they won't receive it because we can quote 66 books in the Bible. They'll receive it because the Holy Spirit is using you and me to draw them to His love. Father, right now, as the worship team prepares to minister to us, Lord, and we prepare to open our hearts to you. Thank you right now that you help each and every one of us follow you. To lay down our will, a little bit more of our will, Lord, to you. So we can minister to those around us. Every day you put people in our path. Just to love them. Help us to realize that, Lord. Help us to realize you're the shepherd and we just have to follow you. You're not forcing us. You're not driving us. You're just leading us. We thank you for that. I ask you, Lord, touch every heart this morning. If anyone is in need of prayer, I've asked my prayer teams to come down. Father, if anyone needs prayer, Lord, that they would come and receive ministry from these awesome prayer couples right now, Lord. We thank you. We bless you. Touch our hearts, oh God, to be more in love with you than we've ever been before. Because we're in love, we want to tell people about it. We give you thanks and we give you praise. Holy Spirit, have your way in this altar service. In Jesus' name.